Everyone um, has responded except for Mr. LaFleur. Okay. But everyone else said they would be here. Okay. <clears throat> Linda may be by phone, but uh, she said she would be here. Okay, that's good. She may be a little late though too, so we'll wait and see. All right, well, it does appear that we have a quorum now. Um, so I'll, I'll get going and at least open the meeting. Um, so welcome everybody to the December 2nd Nantucket Conservation Commission meeting. This meeting is uh, being held entirely remotely via Zoom. Uh, so please uh, make sure to have yourself muted uh, when you're not speaking so you're not picked up by the recording. Also remember not to screen share your computer as anything you might screen share uh, will be captured by the recording. Um, if you need to speak, please wait to be recognized by the chair. Please raise your hand. Um, and that uh, will hopefully give us a nice, um, nicely run meeting with, with easy minutes for Terry. Uh, so we will uh, open tonight's meeting. Um, the following items are continued. Uh, under notices of intent, we have Lower Pacamo Nominee Trust at 88 Pacamo Road, continued until December 16th. We have Pacamo Point Realty Trust at 90 Pacamo Road, continued until December 16th. Uh, we have Spencer at 3 Fulling Mill Road, continued until December 16th. I also just missed one. Uh, we have Land Bank at 13579. 11, 13, 15, and 15A Maya Comet Road continued until December 16th. And then we have NIR Retail LLC at Four Harbor Square continued until December 16th. I believe that's all our continuances for this evening. Uh, so we will begin tonight uh, under public meeting, uh, public comment on items not being heard this evening. I apologize ahead of time because I have a rowdy dog that I think is gonna make herself noticed at some point. <laughs> um, it does not appear that we have any public comment at this point. Uh, so we will move on to our notices of intent. Uh, and we will begin this evening uh, under the application for Kane at 12 Pond Road. And we have Brian Madden on to represent this one. Um, before we open, I just wanted to, I got on a little bit late. Um, Linda and Dave are not going to be joining. Uh, Dave, probably not. Linda might be a little bit late. Okay. Um, cause I think we would want to continue to have a, a larger, uh, board. Um, I don't know if we could be tabled a little bit down or, um, just continue to the 16th. Um, you, yeah, I mean, Jeff, Linda's definitely coming on at some point, right? She told me that she was. Okay. Um, so Brian, we can, uh, push this down and see if she signs on for you. Okay, great. Yeah, I, uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, so we will begin then with eight Walsh LLC at eight Walsh street represented by Art Gasparo. I don't think he's on yet. Um, well, swings and misses here tonight. So <laughs> um, I guess- We're just cutting through them too fast. Yeah. Um, I'm prompt at starting these meetings at five. So, <laughs> um, all right. So we will start then uh, with 11 Woodbury Lane Realty Trust at 11 Woodbury Lane. Uh, and we have Brian Madden on representing this one. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Brian Madden from LEC Environmental uh, representing the applicants. Uh, so uh, where we last left off at the prior meeting, um, we had discussed meeting out on site with Jeff to review the wetland boundary now that we have the opportunity to take a look at the soils information, whereas previously with ongoing investigations uh, during the initial delineation, we weren't able to uh, evaluate soils. It was all done visually. Um, and so Jeff and I met out there 
uh, before Thanksgiving and uh, made some minor adjustments to the wetland boundary based on the soils where there was a um, pretty um, obvious change in soil um, uh, in that vicinity, uh, just offsite, um, which we had submitted the updated site plan. I don't know, Jeff, if you can share that, which effectively put the uh, proposed all proposed structures outside the 50 foot buffer zone. So I think the uh, six square feet of that corner of the garage is, is no longer a issue. Thank you. Can everyone see that okay? So again, the red is the proposed structural footprint. And so that corner of the um, garage uh, just uh, comes right up to the 50, uh, but is outside as is the, uh, the stoop. And uh, the client um, applicant is committed to the landscaping uh, restoration uh, within the lawn areas within the 25 foot buffer zone as, as originally proposed. So no change there. I can turn over to questions. All right. Thank you, Brian. Um, I appreciate you going back and um, moving some of those structural elements. Uh, Jeff? So real quickly, I just wanted to add in, because I, I know you guys had asked, is just to run over what Brian and I did in the field, just to hopefully to provide that. So you had asked and we, we gained access to look at that wetland line and we ended up doing um, you know, three or four different soil holes to kind of observe the soil conditions primarily, because it was mostly disturbed vegetation. So if you look, um, and of course I took the, the flag, the plan down, but um, it's mostly privet hedge along the edge there and then it gets into some clearly disturbed vegetation. So we kind of really based it more on the soils that were there. And I, I tend to agree with Brian that there was a pretty distinct uh, break and pretty minimal transition zone from what we determined to be hydric soils to not. There's a really distinct uh, break in the parent soils and the chroma in that parent soil that was there and riboxomorphic features. So I think being able to look at the soils really cleared that up a bit on this site. Um, and I think I really feel comfortable now with the delineation being able to access on that other property and disturb soils now that the rest of that situation is disturbed. So I think that um, the delineation here is, is accurate as it's shown on the plan. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Maureen? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I, I missed the prior meeting, but in looking over um, the, uh, the notes and the, um, the film, um, there was a, a quite a discussion about whether this could be grandfathered in and you know a, a lot of back and forth about whether that could happen. And does this change in the wetlands boundary basically make that moot? If, I'm, if, I, if I was understanding that right. You want me to take that, Brian? Please. So I, I think after the wetlands boundary and the other changes that were made, they no longer require waivers to that 50 foot setback. So whether it's grandfathered or adverse impact, no reasonable alternative uh, is moot for the structure. But the other portion of it is the revegetation work uh, for the area that they've offered still does require the waiver. And I think our staff recommendation would obviously be that returning a lawn area to native vegetation would qualify under that long-term net benefit uh, provision of the waiver requirements. Yeah, and uh, oh, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh no, no, sorry. Uh, and just to jump in, also too, that the um, the other waiver uh, requested is from the two foot separation of high groundwater, uh, where right now there's a much deeper basement. It's being replaced with a shallow crawl space 
uh, foundation for mechanicals. Um, so no living space down below and the bottom of the footing has been established almost one foot above documented high groundwater on site. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Mark? So, so Brian, it, it still will be a waiver project for the, the groundwater separation? Yes, yep, uh, for for the structure itself and then, yeah, for the revegetation within the 25 foot buffer zone. I got you, and, and follow up, Ashley, if I may. Yep, go ahead. Um, uh, and it's for Jeff. Jeff, did, did you uh, witness the, uh, the, the soil sampling when they redug dug the holes? Yes, Brian and I did that together. Thank you, I, that, that's reassuring, thank you. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? If not, we'll open it up and see if there's any public comment on 11 Woodbury. Jeff? Sorry, I just wanted to make one comment for clarity because it's a little bit confusing and it impacts the, the waiver discussion a little bit. The current basement on the house is a, a full foundation and they are changing from the full foundation to a crawl space foundation. So they are reducing the amount of structure in the ground. It's just not very clear from the plan, so. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, it's helpful for that two foot separation. Um, so Jeff, um, seeing that there's no public comment, do we have everything we would need to close this one? Uh, yes, you have all the required information. Uh, Brian, would you like to close? Please. Is there a motion to close? So moved. Motion made by Seth. Is there a second? Uh, seconded by Maureen. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Arison I, Golding. I and I read in Jeff. Um, Phillips. Aye. Okay, so that carries unanimously. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Take care. You too. Um, so we'll go um, back to 8 Walsh Street, LLC at 8 Walsh Street. Uh, and this is represented by Art Gasparo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and my apologies for uh, not getting right on the very start of the meeting. Okay. Um, I'm before you tonight with the uh, second hearing for the application for work um, at 8 Wall Street within land subject to coastal storm flowage, as well as within the buffer zone to an isolated vegetated wetland. Uh, based on the discussion at the first meeting, we have revised the proposal and uh, submitted revised plans which eliminate the, um, we had been proposing to take out the structure that was there, uh, put in a new foundation and move it forward a bit, make it slightly larger. And instead, um, what we've done is to investigate the foundation of the uh, structure that's in place. And we're proposing to um, keep, that, keep that structure, and the foundation rather, and then um, just build on top of it. So, um, we would be uh, changing from um, essentially what is a garage to a, to a, to a small cottage uh, using the, the, the same foundation and, and footprint. And I think it is important to note um, that we included the aerial as well that the, uh, you know, that the resource area that we're, we're talking about in the buffer zone is, uh, you know, with, within, uh, it's, it's really all, uh, a lot of it is lawn area and within this, you know, very, very dense neighborhood. Um, and so, um, you know, low elevations in that area, as you're, as you're all aware, uh, when it comes to the interest protected by the commission, we don't see that, uh, the proposal building on an existing foot foundation, even if it is, uh, going higher has any negative impact on any of the protected interests. And we hope the commission agrees and would be happy to, um, uh, take any questions or comments that you may have. Thank you, Art. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Looks 
like no. Uh, so we'll open it up to public comment on this one. Um, Charles Phillips. Yes, it's Charles Phillips again. I'm at 4 Swain Street and I, I just, I appreciate them coming back and um, are willing to use the existing foundation, but I just want to highlight that it's still an, a non-conforming setback in a no-build zone. And I'm against them furthering an, an encumbrance uh, by adding another floor. So um, I just want to make my objection clear on this on the second floor because it uh, directly impacts uh, me and the neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Um, let's see if there's any public comment on YouTube. Doesn't appear to be. Uh, Ian? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Jeff Carlson, um, please. So, yep. Jeff, the, no matter how sympathetic we might be to Mr. Phillips, it's, isn't it really beyond our purview? As far, well, I, I think the setbacks that he was referring to, Ian, are the, the 25 and 50 foot buffer zone setbacks. It, yes, but if, if it was the zoning setbacks that is outside of our purview, they would require whatever permits are necessary from HDC or zoning or health or building to activate any kind of project um, to have our permit be valid. They're required to have all other permits. Um, but I can't speak to what requirements would be there for zoning or, or planning or, or whatever it would be. Right, but since they're, it's being rebuilt within the existing footprint, um, it sort of limits uh, our decision, does it not? Well, I think the discussion that you guys would have would be related primarily to, you know, whether or not, I mean, the, the structure is clearly existing. That's there is if a change in that existing structure would create an adverse impact to the resource area or its buffer zone or do damage to the interests. Um, in a historical context, as far as work that's happened on existing structures, if it were a new structure, it would have to comply with the rules, obviously. I think the way the boards looked at a lot of these in the past is for existing structures, I think you look for the best compliance possible and then you look at the existing conditions for staying within those existing impacts from there. At least that's how it's more historically been done. Hopefully that answers your question. Well, right. it, it does. And if I may just have a follow-up, Madam Chair. Yeah, it, it's ahead. just that, you know, judging, the, it's not going to change the runoff or anything that I can see appreciably. And so I don't see really how it can be argued that it's having an adverse impact on the resource area. And I, I'm sorry I have to say that, Mr. Phillips, I, but I don't see how we could um, oppose it. Um, yeah, Ian, I have to agree with you for the most part on this one because I think we have historically allowed individuals to rebuild in the same footprint. Uh, I right. realize this is going up a story, um, but as far as our interests, um, it is more difficult to find adverse impacts in this particular situation. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Maureen? Yes, thank you. Um, this is kind of to everybody at large, I mean, the, the issues that Mr. Phillips properly raises, and I, I am sure I would feel the same way too if this were next door to me, um, are ones that, that the HDC, um, I believe would be the ones, would be looking towards the um, you know, appropriateness, if you will, of adding that second story in that particular neighborhood as opposed to um, you know, the limits within our jurisdiction, is that, am, am I, <clears throat> excuse me, is that, is that 
proper and I assume they got HTC approval or has that been done already? Art, maybe I'm asking Art that question. I'd have to um, defer to the residential designer on that. I don't know if they, they did or they, they didn't. I, I don't really deal with the HTC. Yeah. So I guess what I was saying is this isn't, we're not the only group that looks at things and we have our, the things that we, that are important for us to advise and review. And, you know, and unfortunately for, for you, Mr. Phillips, this is not something that's within our purview. Um, now that it's all uh, on the same uh, foundation. So I what, kind of wanted to clarify that there's more eyes than ours looking at this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, any other commissioner's comments or questions? Or any public comment, because that is open. Again, uh, Mr. Phillips, we appreciate you being here to speak. Thank you for hearing me. Uh, RJ. Thank you, Madam Chair. On behalf of the Nantucket Land Second Council, RJ Turcott. Just curious for any of the board members here or Jeff Carlson, um, has there ever been a case of a single story structure that added multiple bedrooms that was denied? Or is this just a case of the commission doesn't feel that adding that much habitable space um, is going to have a detrimental impact? And is there some sort of uh, line or project in the past that was denied or would be denied because it was a larger second story above the roof line? Thank you. Thank you, RJ. Um, I feel like this has maybe come up once before. Um, Jeff? So I, I guess I'll give it a go uh, to answer that, at least to some degree. I, I can't recall a time where a situation like that's been denied for changing, you know, essentially changing use in the same footprint itself. Um, I think the part that gets tricky with that is we typically don't regulate use within the structure. We regulate whether it's a structure or not, and then where it is relative to the resource area because we don't really have a way or a legal way to govern to govern use. Um, I think the only time where we see you know use come in as far as discussions or conditionings are, you know, we've conditioned things before, like you know, what kind of boats are available to access a dock or a pier because of depth and making sure that you know motors don't do damage to land under the ocean or uh, in the water body or those things. And that's kind of on the line, but we've never typically controlled interior space as far as uh, whether or not it could be, you know, a bedroom or a storage room that's not really within the ability of the act to do that. So um, hopefully that's helpful or maybe more of a, a $10 answer to the question than it needed to be. Uh, but I can't think of a time where that's been denied. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Seth? Thank you, Madam Chair. I've looked this up before, and we do have a definition of habitable space in our local regulations, but it only appears four times. Um, there's one related to a boathouse. There's one that's the definition of itself, and there's one that has to deal with uh, the substantial improvement, improvement sorry, to um, structures that predate the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, in this case, it's not really relevant to either of the uh, resource areas that we're talking about. So as much as we maybe are concerned from a logical perspective about how the structure is gonna be used, there's nothing within the, the Wetlands Protection Act or our local regulations that allow us to um, provide any regulatory guidance on interior space at this point. I think there should be in the update, but right now um, we just, the structure is the same structural footprint as it's going to be the same as it is right now. So there's no change to any of the protected interests uh, as long as we condition it with the standard conditions like uh, lighting, 
directed away from the resource area and things like that. But especially if it's going to be a dwelling, we should do that. But in terms of the interior space, we don't really have a lot of say. Thank you, Seth. Uh, Ian? Thank you, Madam Chair. And I guess, again, through you to Jeff, um, since it is actually a new structure, even though it's on an existing footprint, does um, coastal storm flowage and uh, what we normally demand of crawl spaces for breakaway panels, is could it be argued that it is going to be, um, it's going to have an adverse impact at that level without um, taking the normal precautions that we ask on a, a normal foundation? Thank you, Madam Chair. So if I may, Art can supplement this answer if he would like, but uh, being in land some of the coastal storm fluids, they still have to meet all of the building code requirements for being within that area. So whether that's, you know, breakaway panel, their louver panels or engineer panels to accommodate that um, or flow through space, they still have to meet that. This isn't a commercial structure that can have, you know, some sort of solid fill or, you know, flood proofing or those things. So they still have to meet that regardless of whatever is on the first floor or the or on the second floor, they have to meet that the build the most current building code for flood zone requirements. And so a follow-up to art is does it meet those codes, Art? It will. It will. Uh, any other questions or comments from commissioners or the public? I'll check YouTube again. All right. Um, so it doesn't appear we have any more questions. Um, Jeff, do we have everything we would need to close this one? You do have all of the required information, yes. Thank you. Art, would you like to close? Yes, please. Is there a motion to close? Motion made by Mark. Is there a second? Okay. <laughs> Seconded by Maureen. Uh, so by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and that moves us on to, um, looks like, Ack East Lincoln LLC at 1 East Lincoln Avenue, represented by Stephen Hollister. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, so um, this is a pretty simple one, I think. In short, we're proposing a proposed uh, covered porch on the back of the structure. Um, it's in an area of existing turf. Um, and because it is in Brant Point, it's subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, and so that's why we are here. Otherwise, I don't think it affects any resource area. Um, and happy to answer questions if anybody has some. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Mm -hmm. Looks like not at this point. Uh, so we'll see if there's any uh, questions or comments from the public. them a minute, um, but Jeff. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify, just to add in for, for Steve, on the plan of record too, there's also some <coughs> HVAC units on the Western side of the structure that are proposed too. Just didn't want those to get missed, but those will be elevated as required by the flood zone too. We have to meet the building code requirements for that. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. So it still doesn't look like we have public comments. So Jeff, uh, do we have everything we would need to close this one? Yes, you do. Steve, would you like to close? Please. Uh, is there a motion to close? 
So moved. Motion made by Ian. Is there a second? Second. Oh, I'll, I'll give it to Seth. Um, so by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Arisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. That carries unanimously. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, everyone. Uh, and that moves us on to 58 Walsh LLC at 58 Walsh Street, represented by Paul Santos. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the record, Paul Santos with Nantucket Surveyors on behalf of the property owner and applicant, 58 Walsh LLC. Uh, this is an application for the proposed construction of a single family dwelling with associated grading, landscaping, and utility installation within the buffer zone to an isolated vegetated wetland and within land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, the subject property is a vacant lot located on the south side of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. uh, areas are uh, land subject to coastal storm flowage uh, as we're in Brant Point. And this one is a bit unique in this particular area because there is an isolated wetland that exists on the property to the north, which is 66 Halbert Avenue. Um, all of the work on this proposed lot is outside of the 50 foot no build to that isolated wetland, but we do fall within the 100 foot setback of that isolated wetland. Uh, that wetland actually exists on a um, case that you heard recently for 66 Halbert Avenue in which we moved the home from 60 Halbert over to um, 66. And that's when that wetland area was um, delineated uh, previously. Um, so it's a bit of a unique case in that we're in um, Brant Point and it's not just land subject to coastal storm flowage. Uh, the property itself is approximately 5,106 square feet. Surrounding land uses are residential. Uh, this, there was an order of conditions issued for a similar building on this property uh, back in March of 2009. Uh, that work was never um, completed. And in fact, later on this evening, you'll see a um, certificate of compliance request to actually um, release or eliminate that, that prior order of conditions. The plan itself is to construct a um, single family dwelling parallel to Wall Street. It would be elevated in accordance with the flood zone standards. The approximate area or elevation of the lot is um, around elevation four. Um, the first floor elevation based on the um, current building code would have to be at elevation 8.5. It would be a um, foundation system with appropriate um, flood venting. We've depicted on the plan a system to collect the uh, roof drainage and also made some um, particular small, slight grading issues on the lot um, to um, eliminate stormwater from leaving this parcel and going on to the um, abutting parcels. Uh, there is a residential parcel to the east, there's one to the south, and then we have one to the, uh, to the southwest, which is um, 60 Halbert Avenue, uh, which is a current order of conditions in current project that's currently under construction. So the intent is to collect the storm drainage, um, the roof drainage, uh, slightly grade along the property line, and then have a, um, a recharge field uh, for post-construction roof and, and water drain management um, within the, the southern portion of the lot. Uh, that's a similar system that was approved um, under the previous uh, application. Uh, we, no fill is proposed as part of the, um, the plan. Uh, there would be a single access driveway off of Wall Street. It's proposed to be uh, paver, pavers and a grass parking grid. Uh, within the, the front area. And uh, for the most part, the house itself, uh, it's a two-story home. Uh, it's a deck on the westerly side of the building. Uh, the architecture has been approved by the Historic District Commission. And um, we also have our DEP file number has been issued. And in this case, because of the, the nature of the isolated vegetated wetland across the street. Uh, we are seeking uh, the groundwater separation waiver 
as there would be no way to put a foundation on this lot um, without um, without that without that waiver. Uh, typically, we're not asking for that in Brant Point uh, because that component of the regulation is not within the land subject to coastal storm flowage um, standards. But in this case, um, we do have that wetland across the street. Um, the wetland line is the 50 foot buffer is delineated and you can see the wetland across the street. The 50 foot um, no bill line just does come over a few feet onto the, the front of the lot, but the, the isolated wetland is separated um, by the street, which is Wall Street. It's a, an existing uh, gravel traveled way. Um, we're not plan planning any um, significant landscaping within this. It's basically, it's existing lawn now, it will remain existing lawn uh, with the exception of the excavation work for the foundation and the drainage system. Um, that's essentially uh, what we're asking for at this point. I'm happy to answer any uh, questions that the commission may have. We are outside um, any mapped NHESP areas. Again, we're in the flood zone and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that the board or abutters may have. Thank you, Paul. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Seth? Thank you, Madam Chair. Paul, can you elaborate a little bit more on the type of foundation that's being proposed? Okay, so this would be a, it would be a concrete, um, concrete foundation. Um, which would be placed on a, a concrete footing. Um, it would be a solid concrete wall with appropriate flood openings. Um, it's, we can't have a full foundation. It's basically a, 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 it's a foundation system at grade. And typically in Brand Point, what will happen is they'll excavate down um, basically to the water table. They'll put a layer of stone in and then they'll place their concrete footing, place their walls, and then um, in this case, these are gonna be elevated about four, four or five feet above existing grade to make the first floor be flood zone compliant. Um, and that's, that's basically it. There's no, um, obviously we can't have a full foundation out here. So it's, it's, a, it's a concrete wall with appropriate um, engineered flood openings. Thank you, Paul. Seth, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, is it actually in the high ground water or if not, how close to the high ground water? No, it's gonna be, typically it'll be, the bottom of the footing is typically gonna be just above, just above the high ground. It'd be less than a foot, Seth. It's gonna be basically, um, what they typically do out in this area is basically um, excavate all unsuitable material, basically almost at, to the groundwater table, replace it with um, crushed stone, get just above the groundwater table and then place the, the footing in. And then the footing is typically gonna be a 10 to 12 inch footing, um, which then the walls would then, would then sit on. So at the end of the day, um, the footing itself would be very close um, to the water table, um, but the, the wall system itself would be elevated above by the width of the footing. Thank you, Paul. Seth, do you have another follow-up? More, uh theoretical thing but I'm just worried about you know as we get sea level rise that's pushing the lens of water up and that's increasing the groundwater height as well so we're not only getting salt water intrusion in this area but we're getting a groundwater system that's closer and closer to the surface and if it's less than a foot away um, currently probably within by 2050 that footing is going to be wet on a daily basis. Um, I, I know we um, haven't considered too um, rigorously yet how we handle foundations in the land, in the resource area of land subject to coastal storm flowage, but I think that's a major thing that needs realistic um, engineering perspectives to look at and um, needs to be a you know, a topic of conversation here. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Seth. I, I agree with you. And um, maybe we could actually get um, someone with an engineering background to speak to us when we do our regulations update to get a little more information on how we can update the regulations and have this area be um, more prepared for sea level rise because we know that it's coming and obviously all the projections that the town show um, have this area 
you know, flooded with water. So um, that's definitely an important question. Um, any other questions or comments from commissioners, Mark? Yes, thank you uh, through the chair, uh, Paul. Will will the uh, uh, I'm just unclear on the you you mentioned concrete wall. Will there be a concrete pad also, or just all gravel underneath the house? Um, it it varies on typically whatever they the, the typical designs. Some of them we're seeing majority of them do have a gravel, basically a gravel base. Not many of them I've seen have a, a concrete foundation. It's basically a it's a stone basically base within a, it's essentially a, a crawl space because in some cases it's going to be less than four or five feet high um, depending upon once you put the footing in the wall in um, but for the most part the ones we've seen out there have been um, gravel gravel based but this foundation system, this foundation system is not um, the engineered component of it while the architecturals have been approved to the HTC typically then what they'll do is then proceed on to full engineered um, architectural drawings and the foundation design, um, so forth. Um, but for the most part, the ones that I've done out there recently have been um, stone stone bottom. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments from commissioners? Not, we'll open it up. Oh, Seth. Sorry, just to confirm the, the waiver being requested is that the no reasonable um, alternatives and no adverse effects. That's correct, Seth. 103 F3A. A. Yes, yeah, that's correct. I okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying about the the alternative side. I'm not convinced potentially on the adverse um, effects, but I'll open it up to other people to to speak. Thank you, Seth. Um, if there are no other commissioners comments at this point, we'll open it up to the public for comment. Um, so if there's any public comment at this time, uh, RJ. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for you to Paul, is there any information on how these footings will perform if they are regularly inundated? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul, do you have a response to that? Well, I mean, other than it's the standard we've used throughout um, Brant Point. I mean, the way they engineer these is the, the between the width of the footing, the location above the groundwater table, um, the stone base. Um, you know, we've never experienced any issues with um, with any of the ones that have, that have been done down in this area. It's typically the same engineers that are designing these systems. Um, I, and we, and for the most part, these are just footings on a stone base. Um, it's all still pretty good material out here. Um, you know, as you get in towards the harbor and things like that, a lot of the time we talk about the helical piles, they'll put the helical piles, then they'll put the footing on. But in this area here, um, we haven't seen any of that on this, uh, on the interior of Brant Point, if you will. Um, it's typically an excavation in stone, footing on stone, and they've performed and they've all performed um, fine. Thank you, Paul. Um, great. Are there any other commissioners' comments or public comment on 58 Walsh? Like, no. Um, so I know we have some kind of thoughtful questions out there. Um, but I don't know if they apply to necessarily this application at this time. Um, Jeff, do we have everything we would need to close? Yes, you have all the required information. Okay. Uh, Paul, would you like to close? Yes, I would, please. Uh, is there a motion to close? Sure. All right, motion made by Ian. Is there a second? I'll second. Made by Mark, so by roll vote, Beal? Aye. Engelborg? Aye. Arisman, aye. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Oh, Maureen, you're muted. Uh, yeah, aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Um, so thank it you. Thank you. Um, it doesn't appear that we have Linda on at this point. Um, so 
Ryan, would you like to continue um, the Pond Road application? Um, no, I think we, we would like just to touch base on the architecturals. Joe's here. Um, and uh, yeah, if we, we would like to proceed forward. Okay, so um, then we will hear Kane at 12 Pond Road, represented by Brian Madden. And we also have Joe Topham on for this one. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, just before I turn it over to Joe, uh, I just wanted to correct something I stated at the last meeting on the updated plans. Um, that connector between the existing house and the proposed addition, I had said it was going to be supported by sauna tubes. Uh, it's actually uh, basically elevated floating freestanding um, from the existing to the proposed. So there's no uh, supports in that in that small connector. And again, that connector overlaps um, primarily with the existing deck footprint. Um, and so with that, I'll just, you know, turn over to Joe, or if you have any questions for Joe, he can speak more clearly about some of the architectural uh, details of the project. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi. So the reason I did the, it's um, the connector doesn't have a foundation is that I can just connect the two added amassing is what's going to happen now is any water that would be upland, so to speak, where the proposed garage studio would be, is going to be able to flow between the building. Right now, the existing house hasn't had any adverse effect on the wetland. And, you know, when I first met with my client, he wanted to do the addition on the opposite side, which, as you know, we couldn't even come close to that. So that's why we went this direction. But the other thing that's not shown on uh, Darn Bracken site plan is the side yard setback. So that's my other constraint is that I'm trying to work within that parameter. Um, you know, and it's only 70 square feet of crawl space, new crawl space that's uh, in the 25 to 50 foot buffer. So I really don't see a lot of impact where this would really cause any problems. And, you know, we do have a proposed deck that we've moved out of the wetland you know, we'd like to remove the area away, but that's a full basement. And, you know, we just really can't do that because we need a vertical access within the house and an ex secondary egress. So that's the other part of that component. So that's why we did this. That's why we're here. Um, and we're trying as much as possible to get out of the wetland, you know, but we're really constricted by front yard setback and side yard setback. So that's been kind of my dilemma. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, I think we, uh, you know, recognize the the constraints of this site. Um, I know. Sorry, I'm having children. Um, Sorry, it's your watch. Actually, that's okay. Um, I still find issue with new structural construction within the fifty. Um, I appreciate that um, it's been stated that there's been no adverse impact so far to the wetland from the existing house, but I don't know like what metrics have been used to determine that, you know, so it's hard without something quantifiable um, to really see that for us. Um, but again, that's um, just my opinion. So we'll open it up for uh, questions and comments from commissioners. Can I just say one thing, Madam Chair? Yep. So growing up in this neighborhood, I do remember this uh, house being built. Um, you know, I'm probably 400 yards away, 400 yards away from the house, um, this house. So I've never seen anything where any impact. I, I honestly think that some of this wetland has grown, which is a good thing. So that's where just from 40 years of living in the neighborhood, I haven't seen any adverse effects. Though so that's where it, it's just a something I've witnessed as a person in, in the neighborhood. Thank you. Yeah, no, and thank you. I totally appreciate that because um, I make statements too where I'm like, oh, there's an impact or there's not. And I don't, you know, necessarily have the data to show it, I guess. Yeah, I'm starting to sound like John McLaughlin by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Seth? <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. I share the chair's concerns. I think the area way being kind of elevated or floating is a very ingenious um, concept that um, 
sounds nice, but I'm still concerned about the added structural footprint. You know, it doesn't matter kind of what crawl space you have, whether it's a full foundation or sorry, what foundation you have, full foundation, crawl space, slab, you're, you're further restricting um, the ability of water to move there and further compacting the soil. So maybe up to now that house hasn't had impacts, but we don't know how that addition may change the situation on that site. I appreciate the design. I think it's creative, but I still uncomfortable with it. Thank you, Seth. Um, any other questions or comments from commissioners? Looks like no at this point. Uh, so we'll see if there's any public comment for 12 Pond Road. Looks like not on YouTube. Um, so Brian, what would you like to do at this point? Um, I think we, we, Joe may jump in here, but I think we may continue to. Yeah, I, I, I think probably the best course of action is for me to go to the ACC and see what they're going to say. And I'll try and get it out of the, that 50 foot. Um, but I just feel like there's going to be some architectural constraints that I'm going to fight with them. And I know you guys, one hand doesn't worry about the other hand, but um, still I need to worry about this from my side of the table. Um, but I think that I probably would come back in January with hopefully an ACC approval. Well, maybe even later because COVID has slowed the AC sound, ACC down quite uh, considerable. So um, yeah, I'll come back. Okay. Uh, it looks like Ian might have a um, comment or question. Well, yes, you know, I mean, and good afternoon, Joe. Great to see you as always. Uh, yes, I like you. your ancestral house in the background. But <laughs> I mean, the, the 50 foot line is pretty much set in stone for us. And so it's, it's a very awkward situation. Um, so I, I hope that the, you'll be able to reach a, a compromise with the HTC that doesn't put us on the spot with this. Well, Thank you. I'm going to come in and ask. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And Joe, just so you know, I, I share the other commissioner's concerns. So I, I think that 50 foot line is something we hold pretty sacred. And um, I think you should try and convince the HTC to do something else. Sorry. All good. <laughs> we still love you, Joe. <laughs> thank you. I do miss you guys. And we miss you too, Jeff. <laughs> um, Application cycle starts in April, May of next year. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jeff, you still have problems with the microphone. <laughs> I'll email it to you, Joe. Don't worry. I'll find you. <laughs> okay. I was just going to say really quickly, uh, just to interrupt, uh, Madam Chair, the meeting dates in January are January 6th and January 27th. Thank you. I had to open up my 2022 schedule to look at that. I know I was going to say, I don't know the January dates off the top of my head, but we've got you, Jeff. So thank you. <laughs> well, I'm refusing to admit that 2022 is less than a month away. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. A little scary. Um, so would you guys prefer January 6th or January 27th, Brian? Uh, I guess maybe before we answer that, j just to, uh, clarify something. So the, the primary concern is, is relative to that 70 square feet of the crawl space foundation being in the, the 50 foot buffer. Uh, it, it just to confirm, there's less of a concern about the revised deck footprint being reduced in the 50 foot uh, in lieu of, of keeping the existing, which is much closer to the wetland and larger in size than the 50. Um, I think any new structural area is a concern for me in the 50. Um, so if it's possible uh, to get it out, that would be great. Um, I don't know if other commissioners have a perspective on that one. 
Yeah, just to jump in quickly. I mean, I think with any potential shift of the foundation, you know, the deck's going with it. Um, so it'd be, you know, potentially, you know, pending HGC feedback further um, minimized. But, you know, I don't see a scenario where the deck uh, could be entirely outside the 50 foot or otherwise the, the existing deck would just be maintained as is. Okay. Um, well, I guess um, we'll leave the final design up to the architectural experts um, to see what, what Joe comes up with. I got So I just got Brian sharp and pencil. So we tell him. Exactly. <laughs> passed it on. I yes, transferred over. <laughs> um, all right. So would you guys prefer the January 6th or January 27th? I think the 27th because of the HTC. Please. Okay. Um, so we will continue 12 Pond Road until January 27th. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Um, so that moves us on to amended orders of conditions. We have Scannell at 119 R Eel Point Road, and I'm pretty sure Seth is recused from this one. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm uh, represented by Paul Santos, sorry. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for the record, Paul Santos with Nantucket Surveyors. This is actually a continuation of a hearing that was previously opened um, for an amended order of condition for a property located at 119R Eel Point Road. Um, the request was uh, for the removal of an aluminum set of aluminum beach stairs, construction of a wooden beach stairs, uh, the removal of brush replacement with a lawn area, relocation of a pool house that had previously been permitted within your jurisdiction to outside of your jurisdiction and uh, the installation of a fire pit partially within the hundred and partially outside of the hundred foot buffer zone. All of this is within the buffer zone to a, um, a coastal bank. So I think the focus of the discussion at the last time we spoke had to do around the location of the, the beach stairs um, actually, we did have a site visit out there. Some of the members were present and we did um, view this area. Uh, the plan that you have before you is um, the proposal for the beach stairs, which is the elimination of the existing aluminum stairs and uh, the um, location of an approximately three foot wide um, stairway uh, that would um, start at the, the toe of an existing slope, run across the top portion of that. Uh, plateau, if you will, in the uh, the landform, and then drop down towards the the coastal beach. And if you remember on the the earlier proposal, there was a pretty substantial um, platform or deck at the elevated portion of the the stairway uh, that we have eliminated. Um, the plan you see there is a three foot wide stairway. Uh, there is a small section that bump out that bumps out an additional two feet for approximately uh, 12 feet in length at the top portion of the, um, of the stairway itself. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, again, I think the stairway was where we kind of left off last time and we're, we're discussing. Just to refresh your memory, the lawn area that we were talking about um, was actually um, outside the 50 foot setback um, to, the, to the coastal bank. Um, and it was approximately expanding what was pre previously approved by about um, 25 feet or so um, towards, the, towards the coastal bank. So there was going to be an area of lawn um, uh, and then a, a considerable buffer between that lawn area um, to the coastal bank and then a, uh, an area that's already an existing walk pathway that would lead to the, um, to the area where they're utilizing the existing aluminum beach stairs. And happy to answer any questions um, that you may have. Um, I think the plan in front of you depicts basically the, the stair um, layout that we are seeking approval for. Thank you, Paul. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Ian? Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Paul. So, Paul. Does it actually state the width of the chair of the stairs specifically anywhere on the application? Because 
I must have missed it. It, it does not, Ian. So, okay. yeah, no. It, so we'll and I condition that accordingly. Yeah, I can add that to the, actually would add that probably to the, the plan will be incorporated into the um, any type of amended order, but we can add that those dimensions and we can fully dimension the stairway based on the um, on the on the plan itself. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Maureen. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, again, to Paul about the stairs. Um, I know we discussed. Um, was there actually a plan, as I recall, going back to the when we went out and looked at it and, and the, the first go round, this this area at the top was going to be wider and longer than the current. Am I am I right about that? Because it was hard for me to tell if that was a change. Um, and again, having the specificity that uh, Ian was just asking about. Um, well, there's a change from what the proposal was. Yes, I mean, the, but what's out there? When we went out there to view it, what you have there is there is a, a set. Of st there's a wooden stairway that goes up to the top yeah. of the yeah. top of the bank. You then walk on the sand and then it drops down to the to the aluminum stairs. Right. Um, yes, the change has occurred at the top. There was a, a pretty significant. Um, expand it was a deck <laughs> it was right, right yeah it, almost a patio right so that's that's out of that's obviously out of the plan now yes okay all right and and having the exact um measurements um you know i i agree that that's that's important yeah. because that was clearly a focus for all of us thank you uh mark oh you're muted oh mark you're muted Thank you. Um, Paul, most of the stairways we approve are stairways down a, um, a, a bank or a bluff. Um, in this case, there's stairways up and then a flat walkway along the top and then stairways down. I think the stairways down to the beach are perfectly within the purview of our, of our um, approval range. But I, I'm not sure that anyway, I like the idea of having a, a flat walkway along the top of the of the bluff there. I don't necessarily see a need for it. Uh, walking on sand is not anything that, it's, anything, it's everything we all do on Nantucket and plenty of it. So I just, uh, I'm not too happy to see a, 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 a more structures on top of the bluff there and leading up to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, Paul, I guess um, I'm curious why they still need to bump out wider than the width of the stairs on the platform. Like I understand the consistent walking surface um, mm -hmm. over the windblown sand, but um, why does it need to be wider there? Um, again, it's approximately two feet in, in that particular area. Um, you know, we, we did it more so if you could, whether it would be for storage of any type of um, materials rather than having it down on the beach. Uh, that's basically, you know, 12 feet by two feet on the bump out is basically what we were envisioning um, within that particular area. Um, and to Mark's point, Mark, the only, I guess I would say is that the, the, the landing itself or that area itself does, while it's in your jurisdiction, it is outside of the, it's not, the coastal bank occurs actually only where the, the stairway going down is the top area um, is essentially uh, the top of the bluff but it's it's outside it's not within the it's not within the coastal bank area um, so it was more so actually just to try to get at least the, the two foot and, and put an area where we could you know whether it be a storage or just some type of small platform on that on that upper area yeah I guess I'm just picturing like paddle boards or something like stacked up there where we know it's windy because the, all the windblown sand lands there. And I'm just worried that if we're using that area for storage, it's going to kind of further impede what's whatever's going on with that um, landform. Because again, I know we can't consider it a, a dune under our definitions, but it, it's clearly a dynamic landform um, that's been trying to move. So I just worry yeah. about that. I mean, the other thing that could, that area, that area could easily be, you know, typically this is going to be a, po you know, it's going to be hand dug. It's typically these are put in by hand, it, you know, post wood and post. I mean, that area 
for the amount of size it is could clearly be cantilevered and it would be, so there would be no, every, the free, you'd have a free flow underneath, um, underneath that particular area. I'm sure that could be incorporated into whatever architectural, you know, building permit they file for the stairway. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Um, are there any other questions or comments from commissioners before I open this up uh, for public? Looks like no, so we'll open it up to public comment. Uh, RJ? Thank you, Madam Chair. On behalf of the Land Council again, um, the owner of the property is guaranteed access to the water, uh, but Typically, the commission has made sure that it's a bare minimum and it's the least amount of disturbance possible and the least amount of structure possible. So this new staircase should really be modeled after uh, the original staircase wherever and whenever possible to really minimize the impacts here. Um, it's not currently a heavily eroding bluff, but things change offshore and this could start eroding again. There could be any number of things that happen in the future in the life of this project that um, would lead to detrimental impacts if there was excessive structure on top of the bank here. Thank you. Thank you, RJ. Um, so, Paul, what would you like to do here? I, I think it, it seems like most commissioners are uh, concerned, I guess, about the, the still remaining platform area. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to keep coming back to you um, with this, obviously, I'd like to, you know, close this out and move forward. So if the commission feels um, that, you know, the stairway is approvable and you um, are requesting that that platform not be part of the application, then so be it. And let's kind of, I think, maybe move on here. I mean, coming back in another two weeks or a month with the platform, you know, six feet long or two, you know, I don't know if it's going to change what your thinking is. Um, so at this point, I'm happy to kind of, you know, move forward and, and if the, if the platform is a contention, then we'll, we'll take that platform off of, off, off of the plan or happy to, if you approve it, you approve it without the platform component of it. The platform I'm I'm assuming you're talking about is the, is the bump out. Um, I know that's the piece that really concerns me. Yeah. Um, it looks like Maureen's shaking her head yes as well. Um, so Jeff, um, we could put that into the amended conditions, correct? Yeah, I think in the amended order of conditions in the project description, I think you would say, you know, the order is amended to include <clears throat> the set of beach chairs as shown on the plan of record, excluding the, uh, the bump out platform. At, I think that would do it. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Maureen, and then Ian. Yeah, I just wanted to, to mention, I understand Mark's concern about, um, you know, can't we all walk on sand? And I, I, I totally agree. It's too bad we have to have, frankly, have beach stairs at all, but obviously they're necessary for transport. And I would, I do think having the same grade of, um, you know, the same level of the path uh, rather than having it be wooden and then be sand and then up on, on wood again. I think that frankly would be safer um, as well. And uh, so I would, so make ease of use, um, I think is fair for that to, to remain without having to, to remove a part. But I appreciate Mark's comment. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, Ian? Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I mean, I feel uh, somewhat conflicted because I sort of agree with Mark and um, obviously the old school approach is not what this uh, massive edifice is uh, all about, but I'm sort of, I guess this is to you, Paul, that uh, refresh my memory. Why did we decide that there was nothing wrong with having aluminum stairs that could be removed in the fall and what's going to happen in terms of the wind blown sand? Um, you know, is, are these stairs going to be an impediment to wind blown sand? And, um, and how come it doesn't qualify as a dune? I mean, it certainly, you know, certainly looks like one and behaves like one. So I'm sort of 
puzzled about that aspect. So um, yeah. perhaps yeah. you can answer all three questions there. Ian, it's, it's not a dune because it doesn't contact the beach resource area. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and that was pretty close. Well, that was the first step you know, we first because we first came in with an RDA, remember, and that was the first right. what that was to determine whether it was or wasn't um, a dune area. Um, so that that was at least opined on back when we did the original RDA. And that's obviously what drove how we designed everything um, right. having qualified as not be not be a dune. Um, with regard to the aluminum beach stairs, um, it, it's a pretty substantial grade here change. What what happens those if it's a, I can understand when we have aluminum beach stair say in Surfside or Nobadier and it's 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 a ten foot drop and it's a simple easy in and out. But to get a set of these stairs, it's a, it's multiple connected pieces, um, and to get those in and out and remove them on a yearly basis is a, is is would be very difficult. Um, as I said, we a wooden platform on nobody or Ave and you go out and it's a small, it's a, it's one set of aluminum, you know, it can be handled easily with, you know, a, a few people, the, these stairs, the lengths and the, uh, the size of them, it's not an easy operation getting those um, in and out easily on a yearly basis. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Ian. Uh, any other uh, questions or comments from commissioners? or the public on this one. Um, so it, it's, sound, oh, Jeff. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I was just kind of wordsmithing what we were talking about and I changed my mind. I think the, the better way to do it, and if it's all right with everyone, I will uh, just share my screen so people can see it. Um, and then people can't question. So when we look at what an amended order would look like, uh, we would just, I turned my screen like you guys were going to look at it. That was incredible. Uh, but it's already on there. So um, just in the permit interview, you would have the same. This order is amended to include the installation of a wooden, a set of wooden beach stairs and walkway. Then I think it makes more sense instead of trying to take care of it there, if this is what the interest was, is I think you'd have this condition 25. that's at the top here in bold. It says the stairs and walkway as permitted by the amended plan of record should not exceed and I, I believe I had this right, three feet in width. So that would limit it to a three foot wide section. Thank you, Jeff. Um, that doesn't address everyone's concern of whether there should be the walkway or not. I think you guys can discuss that as much as you want, but I at least wanted to get what made sense for what we had talked about earlier for everyone to discuss. I mean, although I don't love that the walkway is there, I know we have um, permitted similar things at times. So um, I, I think I'm all right with it in this case, but I do understand that we have differing kind of opinions. So uh, Ian. Thank you. I'm sorry to belabor the point, but um... Is it, you remember on Matica, we were talking about, we didn't want to have a rail. And um, Paul, are you planning on having a rail on the, on the part of the walkway that doesn't have steps? Um, that so, I know, obviously the architects haven't done anything until under my recommendation that we come, you know, we don't spend time and effort designing something that's not that until we get approved here. So I think the next step would be move on to the HDC um, and have them um, come up with how this would, how this would look. Um, I don't know what they would do on that, on that walkway there. I mean, they're obviously the stairs up and the stairs down would um, or under the building code would require a rail. Um, I don't necessarily know if it would be required across the, across the, the that flat section, Ian. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, Ian. No, I, I guess I was going to put it to my fellow commissioners whether or not we should condition it so that there's no handrail on the horizontal part. I mean, um, I, I would be fine with that condition. Um, looks like Mark and Maureen are also giving the thumbs up there. 
Uh, and I know, Jeff, you had something to say. I was just going to say you can condition that, but old savvy commissioners know the rules. So they took care of it themselves. Thank you, Jeff. All right. So at this point, commissioners, do we want to have further discussion uh, or would somebody like to make a motion to approve the amended order? Uh, so motion made by Maureen. Is there a second? Is this to close the hearing or approve the order? This would be to approve the amended order. Mm -hmm. no. uh, Jeff? If people would like, I can put the, if they give me two seconds to finish typing, I can put that, the draft findings and stuff back up on the screen. If you wanted to see it one last time with those conditions on it that you guys talked about, if that would help. Yeah, I think that would be good just so everybody knows what, what page we're on, what the final um, conditions will look like. Sorry, I just had to type my last few words. I'll run over that. So I'll just share it up again. I'll not share my screen this time. So just to be clear, uh, so it has the permit overview. This order is amended to include the installation of a set of wooden beach stairs and walkway. And then there's condition 25 and 26. 25, the stairs and walkway is permitted by the amended plan of record, should not exceed three feet in width. And then 26, the walkway section shall not have a handrail. Thank you, Jeff. All right, so Maureen made the motion. Uh, are we waiting on a second? I mean, I almost never do this, but I'll go ahead and second this one because there's only four of us to avoid the silence over here. <laughs> um, so by roll vote, Beal. Uh. Uh, <laughs> this is the one I'm not going to go to the wall on. I'll vote aye. Okay. Uh, Erisman, aye. Golding? Uh, <laughs> aye. Fill up. Aye. All right. Yeah. So, um, that carries with Commissioner Engelborg recused um, with obviously some some wavering out there, but you, you got most of it, Paul. <laughs> yeah, I, but that's, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, th thank you uh, for bringing this one back again. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so that moves us on uh, in the public meeting to requests for determination of applicability. Uh, we have none of those, so we'll move on to minor modifications. We have Wallace Ack LLC at 45 Hulbert Avenue. Hello, Madam Chair. Jeff Blackwell from Blackwell and Associates for this application. <clears throat> the um, uh, we're bringing forward the um, uh, details of the plantings that have been worked out since the original um, application. The order of conditions was issued some time ago. Um, the house is well underway and um, <clears throat> the owner is looking forward to the spring to the planting season. Um, some of the uh, main points of the, uh, that have been worked out uh, include <clears throat> the plantings that will take place in that sand strip. If, if you remember, there's a four or five foot sand strip behind the bulkhead. Um, between the lawn and the bulkhead, and um, it's proposed to plant that with um, American beach grass, um, eastern showy adder, sea lavender, and seaside goldenrod. Um, the um, landscape design plan that you have before you also gives a complete listing of um, plant species and locations um, elsewhere on the site. Um, the other sort of main elements 
um, that are on the plan, the uh, landscape plan is along the south and east side of the house, a um, shell path with um, bluestone stepping stones is proposed um, to transition around the east side of the house. Um, also, um, a, uh, a reduction in the size of the driveway is proposed and to offset what had been approved as driveway area uh, to put in a, um, a boardwalk at grade. The um, boardwalk it would be comprised of um, pressure treated two by four um, uh, members that are placed directly on the sand and then um, wooden slats uh, built on top so that um, there would be no, it would not be an elevated boardwalk, but would be flush with the surrounding uh, driveway or the parking area and the lawn. And there would be no loss of um, permeability in uh, this flood zone area. Um, let's see. That's, those are the highlights of the um, landscape details that have been worked out uh, since the original approval. And I'll um, try to answer any questions that you have. Great, thank you, Jeff. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Seth and then Ian. Thank you, Madam Chair. In terms of the landscaping, the planting schedule for the 25 foot buffer looks great. The 50 to 100 foot buffer, I have a few questions. It looks like a few of the non-native species on that list, um, the columnar oak and the Russian, Russian sage and the um, climbing rose might intrude slightly into the 50 foot buffer zones and I think we would not want that. Um, it's, a, it's hard to tell exactly from the plan, but it looks like on the eastern side of the lot, that oak definitely goes into the 50 and kind of on the, the western side of the house itself, that sage and rose might go slightly into the 50. So just requesting that native plants only in the 50 foot buffer, uh, that would be my recommendation. Thank you, Seth. Um, Ian, you had your hand up. Yes, Madam Chair. And um, so I guess in looking at the drawing with the proposed dewatering area on the other side of the um, existing timber bulkhead, the, um, and then a proposed dewatering bin and pump on the landward side of the bulkhead, could you uh, tell us more about that? And why is it not going out to Hulbert Avenue rather than practically on the high tide line? And is that temporary or permanent? Did I miss something in the last application? Yeah. <laughs> Thank if you. I could, Matt, through the, through the chair, if I could. Yes, Jeff, go ahead. Um, yes, Ian, these are um, features that have been previously approved um, there was a um, minor modification, or, uh, excuse me, an amendment to this uh, order of conditions that was submitted earlier this year. And the uh, dewatering area is temporary and it is associated with the uh, excavation and installation of the underground LP tank just adjacent to the parking area. Um, so these, these are elements that are not proposed under this minor modification, but in fact have, were approved under the um, amendment earlier this year. Well, thank you, Jeff. I sort of, I, I understand that, but um, I either I wasn't present or I completely forgotten about this. And I was, um, so, um, how long is it going to be there for? And is it filtered? I mean, are there chemicals going in right there? What's stopping chemicals from being um, excluded? 
sort of, you know, the normal landscaping chemicals. And so thank you for your patience in explaining this to me. Sure, um, through the chair, um, I expect that the, um, the term of the dewatering required to install the tank would not be more than two days. Um, only groundwater is going to be pumped up to the um, settlement basin uh, that is on the south side of the bulkhead and, and then water would uh, discharge in, onto the beach. So there, there would be no chemicals. In fact, um, well, there shouldn't be any chemicals or fertilizers anyway, but um, this is now a construction site and it's um, off season for the growing season. So there, we should just be pumping groundwater up there for a two day period. Well, um, through you, Madam Chair, so thank you for giving me peace of mind and refreshing my memory. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, and I know I um, have to agree with Seth about the landscaping aspects um, and some of those ornamentals being out of the 50. Um, is that something um, you think your client would be amenable to, Jeff? Y yes, um, no problem whatsoever. I will... Um pass that on to the um, landscape architect and the, um, the owner, and we will see that um, none of the three, the sage, the columnar oak, or the climbing rose will be uh, within a 50 foot setback. Okay, thank you, Jeff. And Jeff Carlson, that's something we can add to the order, right? Yeah. Um, all right, so if there are no further questions, um, would somebody like to make a motion to issue uh, the minor mod, excluding uh, the ornamentals, Mark? Uh, is there a second? Uh, seconded by Ian. So by roll vote, Beal? As amended, aye. Engelborg? Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Right, that carries unanimously. Thank you, Thank Jeff. You. Thank you. Uh, that moves us on to Formella at 8 Old Westmore Farm Road. Um, Jeff, who do we have representing this one? Paul Santos. Paul, all right. Hi, Paul. I thought, I'm sorry. I was all thumbs. I couldn't find any of the buttons. Uh, thank you. For the record, Paul Santos with Nantucket Surveyors. Uh, this is a minor modification request for an existing uh, residential property that's being redeveloped, uh, located at 8 Old Westmore Farm Road. Um, the minor mod is simply the um, shifting of a, a previously approved garage location. Um, the, um, the location is basically shown in red. The, the grayscale is the approved location of the garage. It is still outside of the requisite um, no build areas. And in this case, we have not only the um, a 50 foot, but there's the 75 foot no build as there is a, a vernal pool located off locus um, on uh, the piece of property south of the Westmore Tennis Club um, tennis courts. Um, that was actually a, a vernal pool uh, that we had previously delineated and Brian Madden had um, um, designated through NHESP. Uh, so it's simply um, shifting the location of that garage area, again, outside, still outside of the, the requisite areas. There were no waivers requested previously. There are no waivers needed um, for this. Um, we just wanted to at least depict accurately on the application where the, um, where the structure would be built. Thank you, Paul. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Mm, looks like no. Oh, Maureen. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, through the chair. Um, Paul, I was just wondering is um, uh, um, that is fitting obviously within a pretty 
tight uh, parameters on, on all sides is our, um, is it automatically part of our, our conditions to make sure that the, you know, the, the people who will be constructing and, and doing things there will be well aware of the tight quarters that they'll be working in so that nothing happens that has things kind of slip over into forbidden territory. Does that, or is, that, is anyone else concerned about that? I would just, it was just so tight and you've got two things you're worrying about. So I was just wondering about that. Yeah, Maureen, we would obviously, basically just so, you know, um, all the projects at least that we're working on, number one, we, we would be overseeing it, but typically what happens in situations like this, um, it's a three-step process for us. We typically will stake a site for excavation. Um, we will stake the site for the footings and then when we come back, we'll actually put nails in the footings for the walls to go up. That's how, um, with the way things are now, you know, however, where everyone's building between the setbacks, the ground cover and everything else, um, there, all the responsibility kind of comes back on to us to, um, um, to foresee that this stuff gets done in the right spot and in the right location. So. Well, I'd like to, I'm glad we have you, uh, someone we can trust doing that. Thank you. But, I mean, we've, I think you've, it, for the for the part of this one on this island with all the surveys and engineers and actually all, you know, I don't look at it all as competition. We're all kind of in this thing together. I mean, it's a unique set of individuals that do work on this island. I mean, this board's unique, but the island is unique with regard to the um, the people that are working. Um, you know, and I think we all try to look out for each other, and you know, that's what we're we're, we're here to do. No one wants to come back before you guys with with issues. Um, and uh, so I, I think everyone is, is cognizant of what's, what's, what's going on and how tight a lot of these sites are. So. Thank you, Paul. I hope we're not too mean when, when people have to come back in front of us with issues. No, believe you guys have actually been pretty well. Good. So. Um, all right. Are there any other uh, questions or comments? If not, Jeff, do we have everything we need to issue the minor mod? We're getting the thumbs up. So is there a motion to issue the minor mod? A motion made by Ian. Is there a second? Seconded by Maureen. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Right, that carries unanimously. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. And that moves us on to Mitchell Owoski. Hope I have that somewhat close uh, at 34 Dukes Road. Looks like represented by Jeff Blackwell. Uh Thank you, Madam Chair, Jeff Blackwell, um, for representing the project. Um, this is a um, application for a minor modification to um, extend uh, a retaining wall that had been originally approved um, on the original uh, notice of intent. The, uh, the wall is, well, the uh, additional section of wall, which is about 40 feet, will be a uh, step back from the 50 foot setback. It will be constructed entirely in the area between the 50 and 100 foot um, step back to the wetland. It's um, a waiver had been granted for a section of the wall um, previously because of um, the uh, existence of the traveled portion of Dukes Road uh, between the wetland and the um, and the uh, the wall, but um, this proposed section in red will be entirely beyond the fifty foot setback. Um, Great, so. thank you, Jeff. Uh, so we'll see if there's any questions or comments from commissioners. Looks like no. Uh, Jeff Carlson, do we have everything we need to issue the minor mod? Um, would somebody like to make a motion to issue the minor mod? A motion made by Mark. Is there a second? Seconded by Seth. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, and that moves us on to certificates of compliance. 
We have Cunningham at 105 Eel Point Road. Um, can you just Madam Chair? Okay, thank you, Seth. Next one, too. Thank you. All right, so Cunningham at 105 Eel Point Road was for the construction of a set of beach stairs. Um, it's a really old permit, but the beach stairs are, are constructed in compliance and, and still used, and we're recommending that this could be issued. Great. So uh, if there are not any questions for Jeff, would somebody like to make a motion to issue the certificate? Motion made by Maureen. Is there a second? Seconded by Mark. So by roll vote, Seal. 1984 application. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Sorry, I. Phillips. Aye. Um, so that carries with Commissioner Engelborg recused. Uh, and that moves us on to Cunningham at 103 Eel Point Road. So this was originally for the construction of a fiber array, and it later was replaced by a, a different order of conditions. Um, but it was constructed in compliance uh, either way. But the conditions that are ongoing are related to the second order. So we're just recommending that this one can be issued. Okay, so with no ongoing conditions. Because yeah. the conditions that we want ongoing are better on the other order that's newer. Okay. We got, we got smarter in between the two. Perfect. Um, so if there aren't any questions for Jeff, is there a motion to issue the certificate? Oh, and he means that some of the commissioners are still alive on this one. <laughs> Uh, so motion made by Ian. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Maureen. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Right. So that also carries with Commissioner Engelborg recused. Uh, and that moves us on to Great State Properties LLC at 92 Washington Street Extension. Yes, this was for some on-site construction in, in a garage. Um, some people may remember this. We had quite the discussion about the location of it with the flood zone and flood waters, but it's constructed in compliance and we're recommending that it can be issued as well. Okay, thank you, Jeff. So if there aren't any questions for Jeff, uh, would somebody like to make a motion to issue the certificate? Made by Seth, is there a second? Seconded by Maureen. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. <clears throat> that carries unanimously. And that moves us on to Full Birth Family Nominee Trust at 58 Wall Street. Yes, the one at 58 Wall Street, Paul mentioned earlier during the notice of intent for 58 Wall Street. Uh, this was for a very similar project, but they never did the work. So they're asking for that to be invalidated. Thank you, Jeff. Would somebody like to make a motion to invalidate the... All right, so motion made by Maureen. I'll give the second to Mark. Uh, so by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. All right, that carries unanimously and moves us on to Delaney at 16 Plover Lane. Yes, sorry about that. Yeah, this was for um, some work. Sorry, I want to have this right in my head. This was for some work on a septic system that was completed um, and is completed in compliance. And we're recommending that it can be issued as well. Great. So um, if there aren't any question, questions for Jeff, would somebody like to make a motion to issue the cert? So moved. Motion made by Ian. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Maureen, so by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. That carries unanimously and moves us on to Green at 19 Front Street. Yes, so the one at 19 Front Street was for some work on the existing structure um, on 19 Front Street. That construction was completed uh, and they just haven't closed it out in a long time, but it's been done for quite some time, but it's still in compliance and we're recommending that it can be issued as well. 
Thank you, Jeff. Um, so if there aren't any questions for Jeff, would somebody like to make a motion to issue the certificate? Motion made by Mark. Is there a second? Seconded by Seth. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Arisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Like that carries unanimously. Uh, and that moves us on to orders of conditions. Uh, Jeff emailed these out to us earlier. Uh, and we will begin with Ack Sandy LLC at 6 Sandy Drive. This was one that we closed last time. For folks that remember, this was the shifting of the existing structure and an addition on the front of the structure. Ooh, sorry, I found a typo. Um, the only conditions I had added was our, our new kind of fill condition. And then uh, the two conditions for a yearly report of the restored areas and that permanent markers on the edge of the lawn so they don't creep closer to the wetland. Uh, but other than that, that was it. Thank you, Jeff. Um, are there any questions or amendments to this order? Looks like no. Um, so if not, would somebody like to make a motion to issue um, the order of conditions? A motion made by Maureen. Seth, I'll give you the second. Uh, so by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Right, that carries unanimously uh, and moves us on to um, 11 Woodbury Lane Realty Trust at 11 Woodbury Lane. Jeff, would you like us to discuss 8 Walsh? Yeah, that'd be helpful. I didn't draft it because I, I wasn't sure given the discussions before what was going to come of the discussion tonight. But um, I'm happy if people just want to give instructions for a, a positive or a negative or anything that they're looking for, that would be helpful. Um, I know for, for that one, I'm um, fine with a positive order. Um, I think lighting conditions, as kind of Seth mentioned earlier, are important with that second story. Um, I don't know if anybody else has thoughts on this one. Looks like no. So Jeff will let you be creative with the pen. All right. Um, One of these days I'm going to slide in a condition that they need to like take me to lunch or something, you know, just to mix it up. Okay. So, well, it's less than 50 bucks. We're good. <laughs> on Nantucket, that might be a tough one to, to hit. Stubbies is delicious. That's, that's Cup true. Of coffee. Um, all right. So that moves us on to 11 Woodbury Lane Realty Trust at 11 Woodbury Lane. Yes. So this okay. one that was the exploding house. Um, so we talked about it here that uh, Brian and I went out and, and took a look at. So I included the condition for fill, um, the yearly report for the areas in the back, the edge of lawn to be marked again. And yes, and then there's the waiver that's there. Um, can actually take out the section of the waiver um, that all structures which are not water dependent. So instead, It would just go from the, uh, which are not water dependent, shall maintain at least a 25 foot natural undisturbed area adjacent to vegetated wetlands. All structures shall maintain an undisturbed two foot separation to high groundwater. 50% of the area between the 25 foot buffer and the 50 foot buffer shall not be altered. So I did some like basic, you know, like sixth grade, make the squares and do the area. And it was really close because we've never, it's being altered even though it's going back to, native vegetation and it was close enough. And I know that wetland system is huge, but on the lot, it was close. So I thought that including it would be good um, just to kind of memorialize it, but I didn't think it was a big deal since it's going back to native vegetation is gonna be undisturbed. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. I just don't like the missed up in waivers. Have it come back to bite us later. No, thank you for being thoughtful and thorough, Jeff. Yes. 
Um, does anybody else have uh, any amendments or questions about this order? Um, and if not, would somebody like to make a motion to approve um, as amended with the corrected waiver? Uh, motion made by Ian. Is there a second? Seconded by Maureen. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Uh, and that moves us on to Ack East Lincoln LLC at 1 East Lincoln Avenue. This is the one that we did tonight with Steve Hollister uh, that was just for the little porch on the back. Um, sorry, my computer just decided to go slow really quickly here. I don't feel like I had any conditions for this though. No, I did not. So just for the porch and the HVAC and the flood zone. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Maureen? Do we need to add the lighting? Because this is gonna be, you know, um, it's conceivable. I mean, should we have the our usual lighting condition on this or is that not necessary? Cause it's all, it would already be okay. This one is a land subject to coastal storm flowage. Oh, right, sorry, sorry, okay. never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Um, the lighting isn't as applicable cause there isn't like a bordering wetland or anything like that. I think you're thinking of the next one. Yeah. For 58 Walsh. Um, I'm sure that's right. Thank you, Jeff. Right. Um, so if there are no other questions, would somebody like to make a motion to issue us drafted? Sure. Motion made by Ian is the second, seconded by Mark. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. <coughs> Excuse me, aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Um, I'm surprised I held it together because the largest spider just came up behind my computer <laughs> down from the ceiling. Could, um, we on it, actually. Well, now she's snoozing. She's not going to take care of the spider for me, unfortunately. Oh, all right. Um, all right, so that moves us on to 58 Walsh LLC at 58 Walsh Street. So as what we talked about um, earlier from Maureen's comment there, I added a condition 21 to the draft that just said all exterior lighting is to be directed away from the isolated vegetated wetland. And then to clarify, I did a little switcheroo here. I just want to go over really quickly that I changed number 19 that from any fill to any soil that needs to go to the site for our testing thing. Because then I put in number 20, the no fill is permitted because we're in the flood zone. So I didn't want to write a condition that said any fill that needs to come to the site and then no fill. So I switched it to soil and fill. Thank you, Jeff. And I think I saw Seth's hand up. Um, and then Mark, I see you as well. Yeah, is that something you, you switch right now? Because the draft we have is a little bit confusing. Talks about soil for the site and then any fill brought to the site later, but we're saying oh. no fill can come to the site. I, I think, sorry, I just, wow. In condition 19, man, I really, I thought I was doing something really smart and then I didn't complete my doing it really smart. So I think in condition 19, it should instead read any soil needed for the site needs to come from the site itself or any soil brought to the site shall provide a soil test for the staff to review. This shall include nutrient content, heavy metals and VOCs at a minimum, any invasive species found in areas with imported soil shall be removed. And then number 20, no fill is permitted by this order. Thank you. So what's the difference between fill and soil? Like, So, well, they're gonna, like most sites, right? Right now that site is lawn is, 
typical practice on Nantucket for whatever reason is they're going to remove that upper layer of topsoil and stockpile it so they can put it back down. And then they're going to excavate for even the shallow footing that's there. And they're either going to remove it from the site um, or stockpile it somewhere too. I just don't want to see a situation where if something is strange and to get it back up to grade, if they end up removing it all from the site for construction and then bringing it back, that we're covered if there's any soil to get it back to the previous grade, where fill to me indicates that it's going above what the previous grade was. That makes sense, but maybe we should also condition that all removed soil needs to stay on site to hopefully minimize the occurrence of the second um, possibility happening. I'm just not sure that there's space. And okay. that's my concern because it's a very small spot. Um, maybe do you want me to put on that number 19? Um, best efforts shall be made to keep all soil, just all disturbed soil on the site, on this on the locust. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's impossible, it's impossible. I get what you're saying, but best efforts are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Um, um I on that point, Ashley. Yep, Mark. Um, I, I'm somewhat confused. I'm not reading it right, I guess. It says, any fill brought to the site, et cetera, et cetera, and then no fill is permitted by this order. To me, they're contradictory. 19 and 20 don't seem to make sense together. So that's what 19, we kind of corrected. In 19, Mark, the change that we made is all of the spots that it said fill in the draft should say soil now. Nothing. Oh, okay. And there's, I guess there's a difference there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I agree with Jeff, but this is probably something we should add to our regulations update that fill to me implies like filling or changing grade, um, even though both can be like soil particles. Um, but would people should... feel better if condition 20? said instead of fill, no grade changes are permitted by this order? Instead of fill? Absolutely. All right. I'll make that, I made that change. Absolutely. But Jeff, I want to avoid, make it more confusing than it needs to be, so. I have to say, I see what you were trying to do there and I appreciate the attention. Well, usually, I feel like usually when we're talking about fill for the flood zone, it means that it's going from, you know, 4.5 to five and we say no. Um, but then the condition we had talked about fill in the general sense of yeah. soil brought to the site. So uh, I think that makes more sense now. Uh, Mark and then Seth. Yes, uh, Ashley, remind me of the uh, case of months ago when we turned down a building lot at the corner of uh, Eastern Street and Right across from the old Mad Hatter, Eastern Street, and uh, what would that be? Um, South Beach. Uh, we turned down a lot there. Um, there's no, no build lot, I'm sorry, uh, because of high water table. And now we're permitting it in this lot. I, What's the difference there? I don't know that I'm recalling that denial. It was what, owned by Don. Don Visco owned a lot. So oh, that had an actual wetland. Yeah, that had a vegetated wetland on site, Mark, and there was no area outside of the 50 foot setback. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, and then, Seth, I saw your hand go back up. Sure. It might not be exactly related to this order of conditions, but it's relevant to say here. I think, given the conversation in the future, we should change that fill condition to use the word soil generally because people aren't using like rubble or other things for fill. Hopefully not, that's not soil. So that would get at testing like if there's fill, but also if there's just like landscaping topsoil that is being used, it should go through the same testing as any other material being brought to the site. I think that's a, very good idea, Seth. Yeah. 
And look at us. We're getting smarter as we go, even in this meeting tonight. <laughs> we'll make that change going forward. I tend to agree. Yeah. Um, all right. So this one has definitely been amended at this point. So would somebody like to make a motion to issue the order as amended? Uh, motion made by Maureen. I'll give you the second, Ian. Sure. And, th and this is a waiver for the two foot groundwater separation. Yes. Yes, right? sir. <clears throat> this was a sneaky one because when it first came in, we, we picked it up because of the wetland buffer, but normally we don't see it down in this neighborhood. So. Um, all right. So uh, by roll vote on this one, Beal. Uh, was that an I? It didn't come through my computer. It, it was an I, yes. Okay. Um, Engelborg? Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Aye. And I want to compliment um, Jeff on his creative writing tonight. Yes. <laughs> um, Thank you. Um, all right. So that one carries unanimously. You only accept a meal under $50, Maureen. All right, so that uh, moves us on in the meeting. We don't have any extension requests, so we'll move on to other business. Approval of minutes from November 18th. You know, we only have three of us in attendance from that meeting. Can we still approve the minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, because um, I know a few read in. Um, I didn't notice anything wrong with the minutes. I'm not sure if anybody else. Um, Ashley? Did, yes, Terry? It, I don't know that the people who are at the meeting have to vote, are the only ones to vote on minutes anyway. Anyone can vote whether or not they were there because everybody has the opportunity to look at it and see if there are errors or something. Read it. Just, just FYI. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so why we pay Terry the big bucks? She knows all the answers to those things. The best of the best. Um, if she ever retires, I am retiring the next day. I'm just telling you all that right now. Um, I, am I, I plan to do that January 23. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Terror. I, I will not be retiring again. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so. like, can you wait while I'm I'm done with my term on the commission? <laughs> really? You can't, Terry. You can't. Um, Hopefully we can we can find someone to try to fill her her uh, uh, her big shoes to yeah, right. go forward. Um, all right. So uh, would somebody like to approve the minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes. A motion made by Maureen. Is there a second? You know, I'll give it the second on this one. Um, so by roll vote, it looks like Mark has stepped away. Oh, nope, he's there. Aye. Um, we got an eye from Mark. Uh, Engelberg. Aye. Erisman, uh, eye. Golding. Uh, now, despite Terry's assurances, which I'm sure are correct, I prefer to uh, recuse myself since I wasn't present. Thank you. Okay, so you'll abstain. Uh, Phillips? Um. Well, I, I am going to uh, to vote uh, yes because I just found it it's it's so helpful when you haven't been at the meeting and you can go through and I can hear everybody's voices almost in the back and forth and all of that. Terry, you really do a wonderful job. So so I I approve those minutes even though I wasn't there. So um, thank you everybody. That carries with Commissioner Golding abstaining. Uh, and that moves us on to monitoring reports. I don't think we had any. Um, so reports from CRAC. So um, CRAC um, met with the select board uh, during their meeting yesterday at around 6.15 or so. And every member was present for Arcadis's presentation of the Coastal Resiliency Plan which, um, so Trevor of Arcadis um, gave, uh, you know, a very succinct summary for about 15 minutes. And then there was a question and answer period for about another 15 minutes. 
And uh, then Matt Fee proposed that the select board accept the plan and um, he was outvoted three to two. So the way it stands now is that the select board are going to consider the plan next month. Um, uh, do you mind letting us know who, who voted, how that vote went, how that split went? Um, so basically, uh, Dawn, uh, um, Jason, and Melissa voted not to accept it. So um, Matt and, um, uh, gosh, now I'm forgetting her name. Christy. 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 Thank you. Um, Christy Farantella voted to accept it. Okay. So, and, um, and I'm being studiously non-committal in my report to you. Okay. Um, well, thank you for that report. I'm gonna have to uh, watch, go back and watch their meeting. I, I would say it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. Uh, thank you, Ian. Um, so CPC? Uh, nothing to report. Okay. Uh, NP and EDC? Nothing to report. All right, that's easy. Uh, so commissioner's comments? Uh, Ian? Yes, so, um, so Seth brought up um, earlier in the meeting, which I'm sad that I've already forgotten something about the regulations that we need to do. And um, with the greatest respect to Jeff, this is starting to remind me of the James Thurber's story, The Unicorn in the Garden, and I, where I don't know if you're all familiar with it, but so a henpecked husband notices that there are unicorns in the garden eating the roses and the wife says impossible and calls the police and they lock up the wife. And because when Thurber is, um, when, when the henpecked husband is asked if he's seen a unicorn eating the tulips in the garden, uh, he says, no, the unicorn is a mythical beast. And I'm beginning to feel that these regulations, <laughs> getting to deal with these regulations is becoming sort of like the mythical beast. And um, what, what can we do about this? <laughs> so, I mean, I've, I've been talking to Jeff like almost weekly or at least bi-weekly about this to get this on our 2022 schedule. Um, but I mean, we've had attendance issues even at regular meetings. So it's, it's tough to, to get it down, but we are trying to nail down probably off meeting days or a Saturday um, in what, January or February. I know Jeff has some potential dates penciled in. So I'll answer that question. Um, I was going to try to send it to you guys today, but it, it, it didn't happen because I didn't get my question answered. I have the meeting dates put together for our off days that <clears throat> we can have meetings. And then I asked the question, I, I know we can have meetings on Saturday, but I wanted to check on how the availability for that works. Like I know FinCon does their big meeting on a Saturday um, just to do it. So I, I know it's possible. But to make sure, since we do it by Zoom and by YouTube, how we go about doing that. But I've picked out a few Saturdays all the way through May on the schedule as well to half that would kind of run January through May for people to pick. And we can shoot dates from there. I just wanted to be able to answer the logistics to that to make sure that Saturdays were truly possible. So, and maybe even at some point, we could even do it in person. So. Um, so Ian, it looks like has a follow-up. Well, just to thank you both for not letting this slip off the radar. And I'm absolutely willing to um, meet on Saturdays because I, I think it's very important. Yeah. So thank you both. Um, no, I think it's a, a group effort. Maureen? And, and I do, I hope we would be able to do it when we could meet in person, because I really think these kinds of discussions back and forth would be facilitated, you know, if we're able to get together, um, if the, the, the uh, sewage tests go in the right direction. So, um, and Omicron does not 
um, derail us further. So I, I just, I think it's a great idea and Saturday's fine with me. And um, so. I, 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 maybe we'll even get into nice weather and uh, we'll even be able to have one like outside. We can have it like the nice new Lucille Hayes perk that the land bank has put together. As long as it's publicly accessible, uh, and posted, you know, you can meet mm. those requirements. So um, we're outside, that makes it a little bit easier too. Yeah, I think um, I, I, pay her it. Yeah, um, I appreciate meeting in person, uh, but I think as well, like if there are dates that people would need to be remote just to get it done, oh, like yeah. however we can get it done the most quickly, I think would be a uh, priority because this has gone years and years and years um, at this point. Um, um, I know I have um, a separate commissioner's comment about like some of the enforcements, Jeff, we've talked about. Um, and I'm curious what happened with that Pacamo project where they drove the machines on, on the beach when they shouldn't have. I know two weeks ago when I went out there, there were still machines on the beach uh, and I'm just not sure they're going to build themselves a ramp to get back up or what, what's happening there. Yeah. So we were in contact with them and uh, hopefully have resolved that situation and got them off of the beach. But um, we have told them that we need them to come into the commission to discuss their access. So I was going to schedule that for the 16th. Okay. Yeah. That's important. Cause if they didn't get off the beach from a ramp, I, my feeling is they, they broke their permit conditions uh, and that should be an enforcement. Yes. Um, so, yeah. But they will, we will see them in two weeks. Okay. Sorry, right. I just couldn't get them. And with the holiday in the middle, I uh, had trouble pinning them down. So okay. it was more on my end because I was off all last week. So um, Maureen. Um, yeah, I wanted, there was, um, at the, the, at the last meeting, which I wasn't able to make, um, RJ brought up some material um, that a member of the public from the, you know, had brought from the uh, SBPF project. And uh, so I wanted to know what the, cause I, and Jeff, you mentioned you were gonna, uh, you know, take a look at that. And so I was wondering where we were on that, if that's, this is the right place to ask that. Sure. So we, we've been on site and inspected that material too. And uh, a lot of the information came in today. I just haven't had it, the ability to post it online yet. Hmm. We've collected all of the sediment testing reports from the soil purveyor that SPPF uses um, with the dates of the testing and things that there and have all of their sieve analysis. And then we have a... Um, quality assurance run through the UMass lab for what the soil components are there. It came in kind of over yesterday afternoon and today. Uh, again, I wish I would have gotten to it sooner, but being away all last week um, was not able to, but they were really responsive when we finally connected. Um, I'll have that. I'll send all that to everyone tomorrow to see what those soils results are. We haven't found any non-compliant soil through the large sample. Um, I also have requested uh, through, I just requested another one today because I, I got around to it, is RJ reported those results. If they could also provide us um, the report and like methodology and things that were used just so we have proper documentation for what was, what was reported as well for us to review. Because um, that's important too. If people are gonna report things, we need to see what was done you know, how things were collected, how it was run, where it was run, um, because it's important to get all of that information in a complete view from, from anyone that's submitting information, whether it's, you know, my mother or a, a lab, but we need to, to be able to see it uh, for comparison. So um, hopefully we can get that and I'll have that around to everybody and I'll have that up and posted on the Baxter Road page tomorrow, everything that's come in so everyone can see. Um, and we'll kind of continue with it further. And uh, if we want to talk about it more on the 16th, we certainly can. Thank you, Jeff. Um, are there any other commissioner's comments? Ian? So Madam Chair, I noticed that there's um, 
executive session on the um, on the docket, but we didn't get um, uh, separate IDs for that. Yeah. So, and Jeff can go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I was just going to say we had scheduled it on there and been carrying it, Ian, to review in, any proposals or things that we got in from potential counsel for the. Uh, for the appeal on the removal order. Um, I had a couple of folks that we had sent it to who contacted me last week with a couple of questions that I answered them and they haven't gotten back to me yet. So the only proposal we have is the one that we had reviewed from before. Um, so I was just gonna carry this on to the 16th and whether or not we have any more or not have it on the 16th, just to kind of reaffirm where we stand because we're getting closer to the, the service date for the actual complaint. It hasn't been served yet, so our clock hasn't started ticking. And um, who, may I ask, uh, was in touch, or is that something you'd rather discuss at the executive session? I'll, I'll send that to you. Okay, thank you. Because um, I know, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, they have to serve us by December 20th, correct? Correct. Yeah, so hopefully on the 16th, we'll have some options. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, we had some, some interesting questions come back. I think there are people that are trying to, if you haven't been involved in this one to this point, it's not the most straightforward. So trying to get people information is, is tricky. And some, and some people are just trying to be thorough. So I appreciate the, the time that people are taking. Um, all right, any other commissioner's comments? Um, RJ, do you have a question or comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to chime in real quick. I didn't see Jeff's email till later today, um, so I will get that information to you, but I don't think it is as high as I initially reported. I think it's closer to 11 12% fines because I think Yvonne Valancourt was operating on a different methodology than originally. So not as alarmed as I was at the last meeting, but I will get that information to you guys. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying, RJ. Um, all right, so if there's no more commissioner's comments, we'll move on to administrator staff reports. Um, sorry, I went over most of the stuff that I was gonna go over really quickly. Um, on a, a good news path, um, Joanne's position finally got posted for availability today. So hopefully by the end of the month, we'll have uh, at least candidates to review and hopefully someone um, I can't imagine someone starting like right before Christmas. That would be crazy. But um, hopefully someone right after the, the Christmas New Year break will have uh, someone in place and get them going and uh, have a little bit more capacity to deal with stuff. Um, also, just a little preview at the next meeting. I know most of you have been in the office. I've met her already. Uh, I'm going to have Morgan uh, sale our coastal resources tech at the very beginning of the meeting. Um, to say hello and meet you guys, um, just so you guys can put a, a face to a name and uh, go from there. Other than that, hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving and fancy trips to London and things like that. So um, hopefully that went well. Um, I got the Madigan, Jeff. What's that? I got the Madigan, does that count? <laughs> hey, you know, for some Nantucketers, going from, you know, Polbus to Madikit is like a two-day affair. You probably had an overnight out there to, to get back and forth. So. But, well, we have the Border Patrols, you know, at First Bridge also. So you have to get past them. Just waiting for them to put in a toll booth. It's coming. Or a COVID testing site. Yeah. yeah. Toll booth's going to go on the uh, the town side of the dump, too, so they can get everybody getting to the landfill. <laughs> Good plan there. <laughs> um, all right. So um, if that's it for our reports. Oh, Jeff. One thing, I'll, I'll try to have uh, things for people to sign electronically to you guys by, like, early tomorrow morning. So hopefully by, like, 9-ish, it will appear in your inbox. Um, and then Ashley, I'll let you know when it's finished up so you can come and sign away. Okay. Yeah. We can be in touch tomorrow. Yep. I'll send you an email or a text or something. All right. Perfect. Um, 
Okay, so at this point, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion made by Seth, is there a second? Come on, everybody. Seconded by Maureen, uh, by roll vote, Beal? Aye. Engelborg? Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Aye. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. I, I forgot one last comment. In the spirit of Linda, since she didn't make it tonight, excellent meeting, Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> we missed her making stroll, motions. Happy everybody. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do a shameless you. plug here. My oh, son is on Friday. My son is singing at St. Paul, and on Saturday he'll be singing with the um, Nantucket Community Music Center around four o'clock, someplace probably on Main Street. So. Well, Great. And Come here and wife, sing. And my wife Deborah's singing on Friday night too. Come on down, yeah. folks. It'll be a good show. Yeah. If Come on down. Looking at Christmas trees right outside the Whaling Museum gift shop. The high school science department has a tree made by our students. So check oh, it good. out. Oh, cool. All right. Oh, if I may just say that it came up uh, yesterday that uh, Harvey Young. Uh, has put some rather interesting illustrations in the front of his um, of uh, his shop there of uh, the flooding to draw everybody's attention to sea level rise, which is well worth seeing if you haven't seen it yet. I'll have to check it out. Lots of things to check out downtown. Right, exactly. Hope you guys have a good all night. Yeah. See you. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. See you tomorrow night.